changes that NCLEX asks about is that it is normal for the elderly's blood pressure to go up or down. Which one? Up. Oh. Down. If it's going up, there's some sort of disease process. Normal elderly, their blood pressure goes down naturally. Okay. Everything goes down. So what you can expect is orthostatic hypotension. What's orthostatic? what happens when they stand up? Does the blood pressure go down or up? Yeah. Goes down, what does the heart rate do? It goes up. Yeah. Orthostatic hypertension, we have to be careful for that. Yeah. Respiratory wise, what's normal is fatigue with activity. Fatigue with activity. Here's another question. Is it normal for the elderly to wear oxygen? Yes, yeah. no? Yeah. Fatigue with activity decreased oxygenation to tissues. However, supplemental oxygen is not normal. Okay. Integumentary, the skin of your elderly, it is okay. It is thin. It is wrinkled. It is dry. Thin, wrinkled, dry. That means poor wound healing of the veins. It takes a long time. Reproductive-wise, in the female, you're going to have menopause. That's normal. In the males, there is a risk for BPH, benign prostate hypertrophy. There's a risk for that. Musculoskeletal-wise, what's normal is joint pain. Joint pain is very common. Decreased strength common and decreased flexibility as well. GU, GU, your alterations are going to be urinary retention. The bladder doesn't empty. Urinary frequency. Urinary frequency. Gotta go for it. And urinary incontinence. Okay, if those muscles relax changes. Nervous system wise, what you will notice is the short term memory declines. The short term memory naturally declines. So an elderly person may not be able to tell you what they have for lunch two days ago. But the long term memory should remain intact. So they might not know what they have for lunch, but they should definitely tell you what year they're born. There's also lower reaction and reflexes, and they need to have frequent education, re-education. That's what you guys come in. You guys will be doing a lot, a lot of follow-up teaching. Sensory. Sensory is so easy. Everything diminishes. The vision diminishes. The hearing decreases with high-pitched sound. So my boys, forget about it. It takes me forever to teach stuff because they can't hear me. Taste, there's a decrease. Smell, decrease. Any questions? Cues for inflex is isolation. There's three major things you guys need to know. Delegation, isolation, and prioritization. These are where people fail. Isolation, let's start with, uh, we're going to actually build on top of each other. So it's just easiest this way. So let's start with our universal precautions. What are the things we do no matter what our patient has? We wash our hands. Put that in the first box. We wash our hands. How long do we wash our hands for? 60 seconds. 30 seconds. No, no, don't say 30 seconds. Say 15 to 20 seconds. That's what you're more likely to do. 15 to 20 seconds. 
or one round of happy birthday. What else do we do? What else is part of universal precautions? We wash our hands, we what? We wear gloves. Good job. Wash your hands, you wear gloves, come in contact with blood or body fluids, or if you're cleaning or disinfecting a surface, you always have our gloves. Third thing we do is we put disposable items in the room. Blood pressure cups, sharks, sharks containers, combs, brushes. We don't share those between patients. Those are your universal precautions. Contact precautions. The only difference between universal and contact is with contact you now have on a gown. So put that in the box. That's it. Okay. There are contact diseases that I want you to know. Okay. VRE. VRE. Vancomycin resistant hair clip. MRSA. MRSA. Contact precautions. Herpes. C. difficile, scabies, roseola, one more is shingolosis, shingles that you get in your bowels, okay, you get them in your guts, <coughs> causes you to have really bad diarrhea. Any disease or bacteria or virus that causes you to have diarrhea is going to be contact precautions. That's contact Universal. Let's add droplet. So with droplet, you're doing everything you do under universal. You're doing everything you do under contact. But with droplet, you are adding a mask. Next, you're adding goggles. And remember that droplet precautions are only communicable within how many feet? How many feet do you have to be in? Three feet, okay? Three feet. Your droplet diseases are meningitis, pneumonia, influenza, that's why the flu is so contagious, and rubella, rubella. These patients require isolation. Now, if your patient has a droplet disease, if they have influenza and they go out of the room, who has to wear a mask, the nurse or the patient? The nurse the patient. And if your patient is under droplet precaution, should their door be open or closed? Closed. Open. Okay. Remember, people out in the hallway can't get it. They three feet, so you don't have to close them in. The same thing with contact precautions. Their door can be open. So you guys know universal contact droplet airborne. You do everything you do with the others, but you want to add a special respirator mask now. Now the mask has changed. Special respirator mask. You're adding the eye and face shield at all times. And the third thing you want to do with airborne precautions is very important. You need to put this patient in a private room. Only patient that needs to go in a private room, private room with negative air flow. So air is coming in, and it's not going out. Your airborne diseases are tuberculosis or TB, measles, varicella or chicken, and herpes zoster. Does your patient with tuberculosis, should their door be opened or closed? Closed, closed. closed please. All right, before we uh, move on,